One, two, three. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome again at Ukraine Media Center. Uh, now in our studio, we have a spokesperson of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Alexander Matuzianek, who will tell us about the uh, operational situation, current situation on the front lines. You're welcome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'd like to share with you information about the Russian invasion as of noon today, the 28th of March, 2022. Uh, the enemy has concentrated its main efforts on uh, keeping the, uh, their lines uh, regrouping and preparations for renewal of offensive action in Slobozhenshin and Donetsk areas of operations. Also, the Russian troops have been trying to create preconditions uh, to destroy the group of Ukrainian joint forces and to reach the administrative boundaries of Donetsk and Luhansk provinces. The aggressor has also been continuing to use high-precision weapons uh, to destroy military facilities and uh, critical infrastructure facilities, including in the western part of Ukraine. The enemy has made rocket strikes against military and civilian sites in Kharkiv, Lutsk, Zhytomyr, and Drivna. Uh, also, preparations continue and movement of additional military units of Russian Federation uh, to have them uh, engaged in military hostilities in Ukraine. According to our information, it has been planned to send military equipment and on 150 uh, servicemen from 155th separate uh, Marines Brigade of uh, Pacific Fleet, uh, their permanent location being the city of Vladivostok in Russia. Also, a unit has been created in the 14th Separate Special Forces Brigade of the Eastern Military District, uh, permanently located in the city of Khabarovsk. Now I'll tell you about uh, key areas in more detail. In Volinia area, the probability of uh, engagement of Belarusian armed forces in military aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine is still there. At the same time, uh, uh, the creation of an offensive group by the enemy in the Valenian police area is not being noted at the moment. At the moment, there are up to four battalion tactical groups uh, from Belarusian armed forces, which have been involved in strength engaging, strengthening the uh, defense of uh, uh, the border between Belarus and Ukraine. In the Valenian area, the enemy has not carried out any offensive action. They continued uh, firing towards our uh, Ukrainian units around Lechanka, Petrukshikish, Petki, and Mashun villages. The enemy has been regrouping their troops and moving some units uh, to the territory of the Republic of Belarus in order to restore their battle capacity. In Homel province of the Republic of Belarus, uh, we uh, see the movement of Iskander M uh, launch vehicles towards Ukraine's state, state border. In Siversk uh, direction, the enemy uses units from Central Military Unit, uh, but they have not carried out any offensive action. They have focused their efforts in fortifying and uh, keeping the lines that they previously took. They have been regrouping their troops, concentrating equipment in uh, towns and villages and forests in order to prevent it from being shelled, being fired. The invaders continue the siege of Chernihiv. They are firing at civil, civil infrastru civilian infrastructure sites, facilities in the city. Also, the enemy continues to defend uh, the positions they previously took and to, uh, con to conduct engineering fortification of their positions. According to our data, the enemy has left the town of Snovsk, destroying the bridge over the same river, River Snov. Also, Russian invaders destroyed, have destroyed bridges near Konotop, Starorudnya, as well as in some other locations. In the direction of Bravery, the invaders tried to use certain units of the 90th uh, tank division and the second uh, army of the uh, Central Military District. Uh, Due to active defensive actions of uh, Ukrainian armed forces, the enemy has been stopped but continued to fire against our troops around the village of Lukyanivka. In Slobozhanshin area, 
the enemy continues to operate using separate units from, from its Western uh, military unit of uh, Russian army. Around Sumy, there has been no active action by uh, Russian troops. Instead, they continue to uh, regroup their uh, units and move them to Russia in order to restore their capacity after losses incurred. According to uh, the information we have, the moral condition, psychological condition of the enemy's servicemen is very low. For example, a serviceman of the 15th separate infantry regiment, motorized infantry regiment, uh, refused to participate in the war in Ukraine. In uh, around, uh, uh, the enemy has not carried out any offensive action towards Kharkiv, instead continuing the siege of the city and firing at its civilian infrastructure. Around the city of Izum, the enemy has been using certain units from its 20th uh, army, infantry army, and the first tank army, as well as uh, Baltic fleet. It continues to regroup its troops and to replenish its ammo in order to probably uh, renew the uh, assault attack against Slavyansk in the future. In Donetsk direction, the enemy has been trying to take control of Papasna and Drubizhna and to reach the areas of Vuhledar and Solodka and to take Mariupol. At the same time, the enemy has been shelling from artillery and mortars against uh, towns of Toretsky, Svetlodarsk, Troetsky, as well as Pisky village. Near uh, village of Terny, as a result of uh, combat action, uh, uh, combat engagement with the Russian uh, Ukrainian army, they have incurred huge losses and uh, withdrew to Makivka. Uh, in Rubizhna, uh, invaders uh, tried to fortify in the northwestern part of the city, but they are incurring losses and make no success. Around Marinka, the enemy has conducted some assault attempts, but without success against and again with significant losses. In Tavria direction, units of so-called Russian Guard, Rosguardia, uh, continue in the temporarily occupied territory of Kherson province. They continue some uh, filtering action in order to find Ukrainian service servicemen, participants of the anti-terrorist operation, those involved in the joint forces operation, civil activists, and they also uh, take uh, weapons and ammo from people. In southern Bulgaria, the enemy has been uh, working to re renew its capacity and replenish their ammo. They continue engineering fortification, and they continue. Uh, they uh, try to uh, assault the Bohdatna village, but without any result. Also, according to our information, the uh, servicemen of the Black Sea Fleet uh, vessels of the uh, ships of the Black Sea Fleet of Russian Federation are in some parts of Ch Black Sea and those all operational areas. Some vessels uh, have come to the area of operations probably for missile strikes against uh, sites in Ukraine, against uh, targets in Ukraine. And I will announce the total losses of the enemy since uh, February 24 to March 28 this year. So. By now, the Russian army has lost about 17,000 people, 586 tanks, 1,694 uh, uh, armored fighting vehicles, 392 artillery systems, uh, multiple uh, rocket systems, 95 of those. Anti-air air defense systems, 50, uh, 54. 123 aircraft has been downed, and 127 Russian helicopters have been destroyed. 1,150 vehicles, cars and trucks, seven ships and uh, boats, and 66 unmanned aerial vehicles of tactical level, drones. Also, the Russian army has lost 21 a uh, special vehicle and four uh, launch, launch uh, vehicles of tactical uh, and operational level. That's all. Thank you for attention. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. Dear friends, you can ask your questions. You're welcome. Please speak into the microphone. Thank you Mahmoud al from Al Jazeera. Uh, uh, Russia Defense Minister Ministry, they claim that they destroy almost all the military drones Ukraine has. Do you still use drones, especially here in Kiev? You used to publish also some videos for using the drones against the uh, Russian tanks and uh, other vehicles. 
do you still use drones in the war right now? As you understand, the information about the uh, weapons and military equipment uh, which is being used by Ukrainian armed forces is confidential. But I can refute the statements by the Russian Federation that they have destroyed a huge number of our drones. Our drones are being used as well as other weapons, as well as artillery and other types of weapons. Drones are used in all areas of operations. So uh, I can tell, I cannot tell you whether we use drones around Kyiv. I, I will not be able to tell you that. Thank you. Any more questions? from Correa della Sera, Milano, Italia. Sir, you mentioned two places, two areas from where the Russian troops withdrew to Belarusia or to Russia. In any case, they left the country. One is the Kiev area, if I'm not mistaken, and the second one is Sumy. Can you specify what do they represent, how much of their total force inside Ukraine, and what does it mean? Thank you. Thank you for your question. No, I cannot uh, quote any percentage, any share, but I can tell you that that's quite a large part of Russian units that have been forced they have been forced to withdraw them from Ukraine to Russia or to Belarus in order to uh, restore their capacity and replenish their ammo. Because with existing forces in some areas, the Russian army cannot conduct any offensive action anymore because they have not created uh, that uh, assault group. Which percentage of those units of the Russian army has been withdrawn uh, from Ukraine? I cannot say it for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Before I wanted to check, did I understand, have I understood correctly that both Marinka and Avdivka are still in Ukrainian hands? And um, is it possible for you to say which towns in Donetsk and Luhansk regions in the northern direction have fallen to Russian temporary occupation? Any towns of any significance? As I already mentioned, in Donetsk area, it's very complicated because unlike other areas of operation, uh, uh, there Russia continues trying, continues attempts of some assault of some offensive action. About Marinka and other towns, there are heavy combat battles. Uh, Ukrainian armed forces and other components of defense forces have been successfully defending those towns. About other towns which have been under uh, temporary control of the Russian army, I cannot name those, those and I will not name them. Any more questions? After the Russian announcement a few days ago that they were going to withdraw, they con consider accomplished the mission against the capital, and now they are concentrating on Donbass. Would you say that from a ground point of view, I mean, looking at the troops on the ground, the attacks, the offensive against Kiev is over? They will not attack anymore? They're not in position to attack anymore? Or it's an open question? And secondly, is it true you confirm they are now concentrating all the efforts in the Donetsk area? And third, Mariupol, are you, what is the evaluation? How long can you hold? They claim it is over, it's finished. They took it. It's a question of few resistance. What, do, what can you tell us about Mariupol? Is still able to defend itself? Sorry for the long question. Sorry. Thank you for your question. Russia needs some victories. They have 
to report to the top leadership, military and political leadership of the Russian Federation and to the citizens of Russia to have some justification for their so-called military, special military operation, which is in fact war that they launched against Ukraine. I already answered this question. We have been monitoring those announcements, those statements by the leadership uh, of Russian armed forces. We have been uh, monitoring the situation carefully. At the moment, we don't see any actions by Russia which would confirm what the commanders of Russian armed forces in Ukraine say. For us, the defense of not only the capital city of Kyiv, but all Ukrainian cities and generally the defense of the whole Ukrainian territory is very important. We cannot stop our efforts in fortifying our cities. We also replenish our RAMA and we recover the capacity, renew the capacity of our uh, units which have been involved directly in combat action against the Russian army. According to our information, the Russian Federation has not 100% uh, drop their attempts, if not to take them, at least to besiege the capital of Ukraine. The same applies to other cities, Chernihiv, Kharkiv, and Sumy. As soon as we see any movement of those units of the Russian army towards Donetsk and Luhansk province, we'll definitely tell you about that. But at the moment, we don't see any active action by the enemy uh, to move in that direction. Now about the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts or provinces. Yes, indeed, this is one of their strategic tasks uh, to completely take those two uh, provinces within their administrative boundaries. Also, the Russia, Russia has been trying to make a ground corridor and to bring those to join those territories together in order to have direct access to the Autonomous Republic of Crimea occupied by Russia. We resisted actively. We counteract. Now about the city of Mariupol, also I will not, uh, I cannot make any separate comments. The city is standing. The units of Ukrainian armed forces and other components of the defense forces uh, have been trying and mostly successfully trying to defend this city. But of course, the situation there is not that easy. First of all, in the city itself, because of constant rocket and artillery shelling by uh, Russian Federation, and it has been very practically destroyed. That's basically all I can say on this. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you for attention. Thank you for being with us. And I'd like to remind you that now we are developing our further schedule for tomorrow, for the day after tomorrow. So uh, please monitor our announcements, subscribe to our Telegram channel, to our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And we publish everything there. And you can see all our uh, live streams there. Thank you for being with us. And goodbye.